Let's go live to Phil Curry now from the AFR. Phil, good to see you. The Energy Coag meeting today uh, is over in Perth. It seems like we're having every hmm. single Coag at the moment except actual Coag. Um, can we expect anything significant out of this? Oh, who knows, Laura? You know, as we said, Coag's where, Coag's where things go to die. But <laughs> it, look, it, it, it's, it's, getting, it's getting sort of bordering on the impenetrable now energy policy. We've got this situation where the ministers wants to cut separate deals with each of the states. So, I, I, you know, the whole idea is to have a nationally consistent energy policy like we have a national electricity market. <clears throat> and, um, you know, the, the government's sort of throwing up their hands and saying that it's all too hard. So, yeah, yeah the, the minister's trying to cut deals with each of the states. Goodness knows what will come out of today. I assume there'll be sort of, you know, deals with some states and not with others. And, uh, and you know, national energy policy will continue along, uh, continue to roll along as the big mess it is. Yeah, the, the clear as mud. Um, to borrow an old expression. Mm. Hey, Phil, um, Anthony Albanese's second headland speech today taking place in Brisbane. Uh, mm. what, what do you make of it? I mean, is this going to be a formal ditching of the, of the tax and spend, spend agenda from, from Labor? Yeah, pr pretty much, Peter. That's, um, that's the idea. I mean, there's been no secret since the election. That's where Labor's you know, going to switch direction and, you know, go, and basically you know, follow what the government's uh, philosophy of you've got to grow the economy to, to mm. ensure fairness because you grow the economy, you've got more dough you can spread around. So, yeah, that'll be an official, uh, you know, jettisoning, if you like, of the, old, the, the philosophy they took the last election. Um, yeah. They'll still keep the fairness aspect of it. I mean, they're still claiming they'll be fairer than the government in the way they'll distribute income, but uh, this is very much mm. about, mm. I think, the word productivity today is, is, is the buzzword in this speech. It'll be non-specific as well, mm. uh, won't it really, Phil, mm. today, because mm. you've got a problem. You ditch these unpopular policies, say, uh, like franking credits, uh, but then mm. on the other side of things, then the political pressure goes to, well, you're giving up that revenue, so what are you not going to fund? Does that mean cutting back on education or some of those uh, you know, labour mm. um, agendas? So... How will he deal with that today, or will that just be for down the track? Look, yeah, I think it'll be down the track, Laura. Mm -hmm. the, the, when Albanese was at the press club a few Fridays ago, it was it two or three Fridays ago? He was sort of gave a few big fat hints on all that, and he, and he essentially said, "Look, if you're not raising the dough, you're not going to be spending it." So we yep, makes we sense. deduce from <laughs> that that yeah, that's right. So we deduce from that that those big mega plans to you know outspend the government on health and education probably we've seen the end of that. They'll still claim they'll probably do more and have the credentials on it. But if you talk to people in Labor, you know, they say there wasn't a single vote in that at the last election because Labor's already got those votes. You know, health and education is yeah, already Stephen in the Labor Conroy column. Yeah, Stephen Conroy said that, uh, didn't he? Quite a few yeah, times. He did. He said on your program. He, he did, yeah. exactly. And uh, and, other, and others have been saying that as well inside the party now. And a bit like the economies in the coalition's column, you know, when you start. So, uh, yeah, they're, they're exactly right. And, you know, Albanese at the press club a few weeks ago pretty much you know, mm. put the knife through the franking credits. And they'll do a few. They're not going to throw everything away, and but they're not going to be in a hurry to announce what they're going to keep and what they're going to go with. They'll, they'll let the government sort of take the lead for a couple of years, I suggest, and, you know, leave their run closer to the election. Well, I mean, as we know, uh, Labor got absolutely pummeled in Queensland. Phil, I mean, will, will mm. climate change come up um, in, in the speech today, especially with, you know, with the bushfires as they are in Queensland, New South Wales, mm. Victoria, they're everywhere at the moment. Yeah, it's a case of who's not on fire, isn't it? Um, yeah. Look, there's not a big emphasis on it in the speech today. It is about the economy and productivity and mm. the four pillars to drive productivity. So, I mean, there's a bit in there about energy and so forth, but uh, it's not, not the subject mm. of the speech today. That was the first vision statement he did a week or two back in Perth where he rebadged climate policy. Um, you know, basically made it clear that Labor was not going to abandon... Um, its cause, you know, its belief that you've got to do something meaningful to reduce emissions, but he just rebadged it as a job creation exercise rather than, you know, a feel-good exercise. Mm. But that was dealt with in the last speech. Right. Today has been, mm. uh, this week has been a big focus on the economy as well from the Morrison government. Mm. I think there's been a lot of pressure on the government to come up with extra stimulus measures without just uh, loading more mm. money into the economy and just, you know, giving cash handouts. They come up with this $4 billion of expedited spending for infrastructure for shovel-ready uh, projects. Uh, I, to be honest, I can't see how it's going to move the dial. And, you, you know, New South Wales <laughs> is very polite, uh, but also mm. complaining about, you know, focusing on this but not looking at some of the inefficient taxes and altogether federation reform. There just doesn't seem to be any political appetite for that. No, you're right, Laura. Um, well, first on the stimulus, look, it's... The, the, 
Prime, it's not a lot of money, as I said on radio yesterday. They buy you a lot of slabs of EV, but it, it's about one thousandth the size of the economy. What's being rolled out in the next two years? So, but the government thinks it, what the government is saying: there's going to be stuff in the May budget. They don't want to get spooked and go early and do stuff in the mid-year budget update next month. So, a bit of extra infrastructure money, um, the tax cuts. They reckon that'll do for now, uh, and we're not going to get ahead of ourselves and blow the budget and, and panic. So, that's their plan. They'll be held accountable for it if it doesn't work. Um, but yeah, the Federation Forum is actually pretty interesting. Perrottet from New South Wales has been, he was the latest treasurer to call a couple of months ago for, you know, look at the GST to compensate yeah. for some of these inefficient taxes. And a lot of Liberal backbenchers, Jason Falinski, uh, Jim, Jimmy Patterson and, uh, and, and Tim Wilson, have basically said that's not how it should be done anymore. If the states want to raise, uh, spend the money, they should be raising it. And interestingly, Frydenberg said that in a speech last week. Uh, at Adelaide University, the downer oration, he essentially said that these days of the federal government raising the money so the states can spend it are over. If they've got inefficient taxes, they should get rid of them well, and replace them with other efficient taxes. But how do you saw the GST efficient then? Taxes. Well, the GST, I think, is done. It's just not going to be touched. Um, yeah, but but and New South Wales' argument Minister is Lyon. that it's mm. raised by the federal mm. government, but it's spent by the states. Mm. And the, uh, still sure. there's complaints about the carve-up. You know, New South Wales is always mm. complaining that they raise all this uh, money, but then it's divvied out to uh, states that need the, you know, don't raise as much. Yeah, sure. Yeah. You know, that, that, that's right, and, and that, is a, that is a valid point, but the GST is, a, is sort of technically a federal tax because it's raised federally, but all the revenue does go to the states and uh, mm. along this sort of weirdo distribution formula which <laughs> no-one ever seems to be happy <laughs> with. Right. Um, but No, and it, and it is a good point. I mean, but the trouble is if the GST is going to be raised, it... The federal government has to do it. The federal parliament has to do it, not the state parliament. Mm. So the feds will cop all the political heat for it and the states get the dough. So uh, well, what they're saying, the feds are saying now, you should cop all the political heat and, and, and uh, for the taxes you want to spend. And, you know, here in the ACT, we've got, you know, where they did a few years back, they, they introduced this, this land tax, which I'm very much on the record as a fierce critic of because it makes life cripplingly expensive. Mm. Um, but so they basically put these mega rates on every house in, in, and business in, in the ACT and they used that to get... You know, well, they said they got rid of stamp duty, but we've still got it, so we're being double taxed at the moment. But the plan is to wind back stamp duty on houses and mm. they've got rid of off your insurance bills and things like that. But I can tell you it, it is enormously expensive now to own a house in the ACT and I would the only reason they did it here is because everyone just votes Labor and and there's no upper house. It'd be a lot harder for a state government to do it. I reckon they'd be chucked out in big time even they could get it yeah. through the upper house. So um, it's a lot easier to tell the states you've got to do it uh, than for the states to actually do it. Mm. Interesting, isn't it? Yeah. President Phil Curry. Yeah. No one want, no, everyone wants the everyone, everyone wants every, everyone wants the money. No one wants the um, you know no one wants the political blowback from nope. yeah. from raising it. Yeah. Exactly, mm. Phil. Thanks so much. Appreciate your time.